So far we've just been using our XPaths to navigate through the file, to find our way through the file. But actually, uh, probably the largest use of XPath is to form a query against the file. So um, we've talked previously in general about what a query is. Um, the key thing that you'll use in order to sort of querify your, um, your XPaths is this idea of a WHERE clause. Now, if you're familiar with um, databases, you'll remember that a WHERE clause specifies the criteria that the database engine uses for selecting records. Now, if you're not familiar with, with, um, with relational databases, then don't worry about it. Just use the English meaning of the word WHERE. The word WHERE is going to be a clause. It's going to specify more conditions. So, for example, we're going to find all the elements where the child of the element has a particular value, or where it has a particular child element, or where its parent is a certain uh, element, or something like that. So we're going to use this qualifier, this clause, this um, extra set of conditions on our query to help us find um, to help us find exactly the right element. And that's really what these where clauses are about. They're to narrow down the scope of the XPath so that it only returns a small set, or not necessarily a small set, but the set, the precise set that you want to return of nodes. Okay, so let's look at some of that. We're going to go back to our sample document here, and you'll remember it's all about movies. And let's see, let's, for example, say I want Whack Whack Movie. Okay, we've been here before, and you'll remember that when I say Whack Whack Movie, it says give me the movie element wherever it is in the, in the instance, I don't really care, and you can see that it's going to return all 15 movies that are in this um, that are in this instance. Well, I don't want all 15. Really, actually, I only want this one, this one, this particular movie right here. Now, ask yourself, of all the movies, how am I going to get to this particular movie? And you really should know the answer to this by now because I've talked about it so many times and I've made such a big deal about it. What is the thing that distinguishes this movie item, this movie information item, from all other items in the entire instance? And the answer is the ID, right? Every item has a unique ID, and that unique ID is going to be the thing that's going to allow us to be sure that we've gotten to that very one. So what I want to say is I want a movie, but I only want a movie where its ID equals MXPER. Okay, so I'm going to copy that MXPER for use in a minute. And now here's how I form that statement. Give me all the movies, ah, but only the ones whose ID equals M-E-X-P-E-R. And how many is that going to be? One, of course. Just one movie because we know that that ID uniquely identifies that item. Here's how I say the where in, um, in XPathEs. I start with a, a square bracket. Then I say um, at ID because I want it to be the ID equals... And then in quotes, I will put, actually, let me, let me always use single quotes here. Sometimes you can use singles, sometimes you can use, sometimes you can use doubles, but you can always use singles. So I'm going to use single quote here to get you used to it, because in other cases, it's, um, the, the double quote won't work. So if you just get used to typing single quotes, everything will be good. And then I close it with brackets. So there you have it. There is the basic where clause. It's inside of square brackets, and it specifies the criteria where ID equals M-E-X-P-R. Now I execute this, and notice I don't get 15 movies, I get only one. Now I can do, I can play around with this a little bit, although I don't, I don't want to take you too far afield. What if I want all of them except that one? I can say bang equals, exclamation point equals, and then I'll get all the movies where the ID does not equal M-E-X-P-R, and now instead of getting one, I get the other 14. Okay, so that little bang equals, that's just a little piece of candy. Um, we don't really need that right now. This is the important one, and this is the kind of one that you'll use over and over again because we're always trying to get to a specific item, and in order to get to a specific item, we have to cite its ID, and here's the way that we cite its ID inside of a WHERE clause. Okay, so now what if I want to find, uh, let's look at the, the schema for a second here. And when you look at the schema, here's the schema of a movie, you'll notice that cast is opposite, that cast is optional. So what if I only want to find the movies that have a cast? Some of them have, some of them don't have, right? So now 
going back over here, I want to find the movies um, that just have cast. Okay, so that's how I say that. It's very simple. I want the movies that have a cast. Click go, and here's all the movies that have a cast. Actually, 14 out of the 15 have a cast. Now, let's look at this word cast here. Suppose inside of cast, and I can get it to tell me what's inside of cast, I want to find cast member. Now I'll find all the movies that have cast members under cast. And of course, since cast member is, is mandatory under cast, it'll be the same 14 items. But I want you to notice what I just did there. I started to build an X path. So the word cast was not the word cast. The word cast was an X path. And not only just an X path, but a relative X path, right? So it's the casts where the movie is the current node, where the movie is the context. So this right here is a relative X path. Relative to what? Relative to whatever came outside. And when I said earlier, at ID, you may not have thought about it, but that at ID is a child of the movie. It's not any old ID. It's the ID attribute that is a child of the movie. Okay, so this is a little hard to understand at first, but it's really important. That where clause uses relative X paths. So you start from the node that's just outside the movie. So let's play with this a little bit more. So I want to have one with a, cat, a movie that had a movie that has a cast. Uh, let's see. Let me think of a better one to do here. Uh, okay, I want a movie um, that has availability. Oops, availability equals, oops, it's availability, sorry, slash at avail, data avail. Now equals, and let me make sure I get the right one, February 2nd, 2010. And I'm going to put that value in single quotes. And there it is. I get just exactly that one. Now what am I getting, actually? Am I getting the date available? Am I getting the availability? Or am I going to get the movie? What do you think? When I execute this, what am I going to get? I should get the whole movie. Okay, so all of the stuff in the where clause does not affect what comes back, what's returned. It only affects the conditions under which it's returned. Okay, so there's two things going on here. The first one is what's returned. In this case, it's the movie. The second thing is, what are the conditions under which I will return a movie? And that's what's going inside of the, the square brackets. Okay, so let me, um, let, me, let me combine this one with the parent one, and we'll see, we'll see now a little bit better example of, um, uh, we'll see a little bit of better example of that um, dot dot slash. Okay, so now what am I returning? Now what do I return if I just do this X path? Think about it for a second, maybe even stop the video, and then convince yourself that what I'm going to get back is an availability. Okay, so now what if I want, I don't want to get the availability by the, um, the date of the availability, I want to get the availability of this particular movie, MEXPR. I want the availability, so I'm going to return the availability. So let me start from here. Here's all the availabilities. Now I want only the availability where its parent, which is the movie tag, right? Here's availability down here. Here's its parent movie, where its parent has an ID equal to, oops, not equal to February 2nd, but equal to MEXPR. Copying that. I'm going to paste it in here. Close that. And now, what am I getting back? I'm getting back the availability, because that's what I asked for. There's the availability, but it's only the availability where its parent's ID was MEXPR. OK, so now we've combined that parent, that parent sign, dot, dot, slash, with the where clause. And that's as far as we're going to go with where clauses right now. Suffice it to say that there's a long way to go with these. There's a lot you can do. But I've already given you enough, almost, to get through the class with, with 
with uh, the use of WHERE clauses because the biggest thing we're going to use those WHERE clauses for is to isolate the item whose ID equals the ID that we cite in there.